Hey everybody, it's April 16th, 2024. Welcome to the Wrestling Inc. podcast talking about NXT. I am Glenn, joined by George. As always, reading my WWF magazine from May 1994 with the old Adam Bomb on the cover. Don't you have it memorized by this point? I should, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the thing about old magazines is like, oh, I remember this. I remember this article. I, I, I'm more of like a 92-ish. I can tell you probably that. 94, I wasn't not watching wrestling, but uh, I was out of the country for like nine months. So I was kind of um, a little bit behind on it. So yeah, there's my excuse. Hmm. The weird thing about uh, magazines in the olden days of the 1990s is that they had like a three-month lead time. I, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like definitely. the print time was insane. You had to get time on a printing press. And you were in line with like Field and Stream and Guns and Ammo and Soldiers of Fortune. And then they could print your precious WWF magazine. I want to say like it was the June issues that featured WrestleMania that usually came out in May. But obviously, May it was always late March, early April. But it was always a June issue. That was kind of the big, at least for me. I was like, ooh, not, not that I didn't watch Mania, but I was like, ooh, I kind of want to see what pictures they showed uh, from this past year's WrestleMania. And I had to wait all the way to the june issue of the wbf magazine go see the photos the photographs oh my god if you didn't watch it live you know you never well, see it again. june 92 it had that great uh, we're going to talk about nxt tonight june 92 had the cover of like a like a silhouette of like macho man and liz with like the fireworks probably i, mean, I have it somewhere probably but one of my favorite covers and of course uh june 90 with the ultimate warrior i don't know if anybody remembers but it was like a purple background ultimate warrior holding up both belts still one of the best covers of wwf magazine ever hmm. I, I like a good magazine out. photo i like a yeah. good uh, magazine cover it's good yeah, yeah. It's solid and mm -hmm. nothing like reading about wrestling <laughs> in print form on a three-month lead time yeah <laughs> oh the kids these days don't know how good they have it uh tonight we're going to talk about nxt the nxt before spring break in steel cage match tonight which was uh very interesting reminded me of uh the famous Final Finn Balor original run steel cage match with Samoa Joe. Just, was that uh, the one that was at the takeover, right? One of the takeovers. It was at the end. May. Takeover the end. Ah, the end. Yes, that yeah. was uh, 2016, right? Correct. So that was when I started uh, doing this podcast at that exact time, almost eight <laughs> wow. years ago. That's all. Yeah, that was oh. uh, yeah, Finn Balor Samoa Joe. I want to say it was a uh, probably Oscar against uh, was it? Uh, it's foggy. But I know Nakamura, I think maybe what against Austin Aries. I could be way off, but uh well, sounds about right. But yeah. uh tonight, a lot going on on NXT. We're gonna run it down. Anything going on in the news? Uh there's I, I mean, I guess I want to start off with something specific because uh it was in the news a few days ago and kind of was briefly mentioned today's on NXT. So just kind of want to get this out of the way. Drew Gulak. Uh, backstage mm. update on Drew Gulak. I guess there was a little bit of controversy in regards to some comments that Ronda Rousey made about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, about uh, accidentally or maybe maybe unaccidentally uh, hand grazing an area, maybe pulling on a string. Uh, this is kind of interesting just because, uh, obviously, well, I'm not going to rehash the story. Everybody, uh, we already talked about it. But in terms of... Um, What's the status? Apparently, he's not listed on any internal rundowns for NXT. Wasn't seen backstage last week, and he wasn't on camera this week. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. But apparently, uh, it, almost as if he's not allowed to be mentioned at all, whether it's backstage or in, in front of the camera. So he's still... Oh, nothing has been reported as far as him not being in the WWE. Uh, so we'll kind of see how that goes. Obviously, we'll talk a little bit about it uh, when we cover the show because it was uh, indirectly mentioned. You know, that can mean anything considering uh, who it was coming from. But, you know, we'll see how it goes with Drew Gulak. Obviously, you know, Ronda has got a book and she uh, wants to promote the hell out of it. And she didn't really put him on blast, but it was just mostly this, the, the reporter just asked him who it was and she just happened to name drop him. Yeah, I encourage people to read uh, both Rhonda's full account of the story, which she described as sort of a sexist hazing mm -hmm. of uh, pulling the drawstring of her sweatpants and Drew Gulak. I mean, literally, and this is not me trying to make light of it, but he described it like a Curb Your Enthusiasm moment of he went mm -hmm. to shake her hand and graze the string and then ended up pulling back and tugging on it. Um, but regardless, uh, in kayfabe, Tony D'Angelo has... Uh, 
uh, murdered Drew Gulak. Is what we learned <laughs> oh, tonight. Yeah, I mean, I guess his words was, uh, "You guys had a problem with uh, one of your guys' crew. It could have been anybody. It could have been a trainee, but obviously." We all uh, pretty much are assuming properly, uh, correctly assuming prob uh, probably of uh, it being Drew Gulak, which is interesting. Does that mean he's not uh, going to be around anymore? Uh, sometimes they just don't mention people ever again. So the fact that they kind of indirectly mentioned it, maybe maybe there's a who knows. Anything I, I, really I, 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 I will just say this, and this is interesting. This should tell you something about the new era of WWE that we're in now and how seriously they're taking things. Um, up up until recently, there were people that were accused of far worse yeah. that were not taken off TV at all. Yeah. So um, you could tell they're in light of uh, the lawsuit and the removal of Vince McMahon. You could tell WWE is taking this very seriously, um, as I think they should. But yeah, I encourage it. But it was interesting to kind of explain it away in kayfabe. Yeah, because um, especially with the whole like uh, even the when the, when they took out Pretty Deadly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, lo and behold, like two weeks later, they showed up on SmackDown. So, I mean, that, again, all these like, you know, wrestling things that are mentioned. Oh, we off your guy, whatever it is. I mean, it, it, it's something. Obviously, we all like to the continuity when it, when it happens in pro wrestling. So we all wonder what happened to Drew Gulak for maybe the ones that don't know what's what's going on behind the scenes. And some people looks like they got their answer. Hmm. What else is uh, happening in the news? So a lot of news in regards to Rossi Ogawa, who was uh, used to be the stardom executive. Uh, a lot of talks and, you know, there, there's three different kind of stories that kind of combine in one for the most part in terms of him starting up his uh, brand new promotion called Marigold. Uh, I don't know. I really like some of these like Japanese um, these Japanese names like stardom is just such a great name for sure. For, uh, for you know, but its full name is Dream Star Fighting Mar Marigold. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, and in, uh, in addition to that, their their championships are just named beautifully. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like that was announced earlier today in a press conference that it's going to be starting up sometime in the next few months. Uh, but one of the people that isn't heavily involved is Julia. She was um, ended up you know ended her 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 run in stardom but she mentioned or it's been a lot of talk recently that she's going to work a few dates for for rossi's new promotion before starting up with wwe uh so that kind of goes into the julia news in terms of when is she going to start up so apparently uh marigold's first match our first uh show is going to be may 20th so mm. we can only assume that Julia is going to wrestle on that. A lot of speculation that Julia is going to wrestle at the Heat Wave out in Toronto on July 7th, whether it's going to be for a championship, whether it's not. Who knows? There's an NXT Women's North American Championship that's being introduced very, very soon. Uh, so, again, a lot, a lot of uh, talk with Julia, uh, a lot of talk about Rossi. I'm not too familiar with uh, the whole Rossi saga. I'm not going to lie. His name, I never heard of his name until like two, three months ago. Uh, mm -hmm. so the fact that everybody's kind of putting all this stock in him, obviously now I know who he is and like, I don't think it was a big deal. Obviously a lot of, uh, journalists like to make, make stories because that's their job. So it, it should be fun to see what's going on with this new Japanese promotion. That's, uh, going to feature a lot of, a lot of women. Yeah. We shall, uh, see how that goes. Uh, anything else? Uh, that's pretty much kind of what we got for today. Um, a lot of news about Rhea Ripley and how long is she going to be out? A lot, a lot of, a lot of chatter, a lot of discourse on the internet, uh, about saying, why did she, why did they have to vacate her? Why did they have to strip her of the championship when you had Roman Reigns barely wrestling? You got Seth Rollins, you know, missed a couple months of action. So why is everybody so quickly, uh, so quick to strip Rhea Ripley of the championship? My response to that is it just depends. Every injury is different. Uh, they kind of play or plan accordingly. I, I like to think so. So uh, it sounds like Rhea's, Rhea's injury sounds like it's worse to the point where it wouldn't be unnoticeable for him to for her to show up every single week the same way that Seth Rollins was able to show up every single week for the most part. So uh, it's all relative, but, you know, I like to think that – I like to think that vacating a championship is the last thing they want to do. Yeah. Right. Just my theory. I can't, I don't, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'd like to think just for the sake of, you know, the business, they'd rather have somebody lose it in the ring than somebody have a, Oh, you know, we, you can't wrestle anymore. You know, well, we, I guess we got to vacate it. So again, take that for what it's worth. Just my two cents. Yeah. I know it's got to be pretty serious for them to uh, essentially have someone drop the title. 
especially since we've seen in the past people get hurt. Uh, I mean, going back to the '80s, I want to say when the British Bulldogs lost to the to mm -hmm. the to Strike Force. No, no, I'm sorry. It was the Bulldogs lost to the Heart Foundation to the point where Dynamite was so hurt that they attacked them on the way to the ring just so they can, you know, exclude him from the match so they can properly lose the belts to the Heart Foundation and so on and so forth. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so. NXT open tonight with Noam Dar with Metaphor versus Dijak. Uh, what do you think of Noam Dar getting the win and Dijak once again uh, failing to deliver hard justice? I think Noam Dar is one of those guys where he is such an asset to any roster, even going back to 205 Live. There's a reason why he was so heavily featured with with alicia fox back in the day or as oh, he would say great. alicia fox right it can never i can never do that however however he said it back in the day uh because the guy is so talented whether it's in the ring whether it's personality the guy can carry an interview mm -hmm. session so i like that they're just putting him in there with somebody that's literally twice his size and not only that he could totally hang so i like that aspect of maybe a new element that Noam Dark can show that he's more than just a 205 live guy. He's more than he's more than just facing uh you know defending the heritage cup against guys that are maybe his size. I like that the clash of styles that we saw with Dajak and Noam Dar and to the point where yeah. we saw Noam Dar get the victory. They're good. I just think it's getting hard to take Dajak seriously. Yeah. You know? And we know that his true love, his wrestling soulmate is Joe Gacy. <laughs> and they uh, just need to form a tag team already yeah yeah that's uh we'll see if that ends up happening i think that'd be pretty cool yeah good match though yeah i'll start to the show uh we had dragon off meeting ava in her office and uh setting up an open challenge for later in the evening but then we had an amazing video vignette not even a video package a vignette mm -hmm. it wasn't wrestling this wasn't TV. This was cinema <laughs> on Tatum Paxley. She's someone who uh, we've seen a complete transformation from when she first started. Uh, I remember there was one, I always, I always think about this one segment where it was maybe like a year and a half ago, two years ago, where uh, it was a bunch of the women in the back in the locker room. And she's looking, uh, how can I say this properly? Um, she she's looking uh pretty good you know if you can say like she she was just posing in a way where it's like you look like you want to like pose for like a cover of like a sports illustrated but just the way it's just just trying to stand out in any way i think i think is, is maybe a good way to say it but to go from that to note to show that she can do a lot more than just look good she can mm. act good and she can play the role good she explains why she went through everything that she went through and like to me this is just up there with you know the stalker thing with mickey james that we saw year, years ago um maybe not as good as mickey but you know but but still it, it's it's still Scott's pretty own, yeah, different yeah that's one thing i think this i mean truly this is more cinematic in how they're doing it i think the production is very high level i like this twist that she wasn't obsessed with lyra she was obsessed with the championship yeah kind of interesting mm -hmm. way to do it um yeah and I like how she, you know, I actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say this. I think they need to go more unhinged uh -huh. with how she's portraying it, um, because I think it's very good. But I think if she takes it to the next level, I mean, it's funny. I think she is one excellent promo away. If she had gets another promo or something of this level tonight, I think she's gonna has a chance to be the most over woman in that triple threat at spring break in between her Roxanne and Lyra. I think to next week is gonna be a huge breakout uh yeah. for 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 Tatum. Yeah, I hope so. Uh she deserves it. I mean Lyra's been good, but like the Irish Wonder Woman vignettes at the beginning mm -hmm. I think didn't really establish her character. I think she mm -hmm. had a great feud with Becky Good championship run, good promo, but yeah, Tatum really has something here that I think the audience is going to get behind because I, th I think it's uh, kind of that mankind thing. I think that she can be crazy but still have sympathy. Yeah, you know, and be the baby face. It's a good way to put it. Um, NXT Anonymous still exists. Didn't they say, didn't they already reveal that that was Blair Davenport or am I completely No, Blair off? Davenport was a parking lot attacker. Okay. 
Now, based on her skills, NXT Anonymous should be Stevie Turner, but NXT main roster, I mean, Level Up acknowledges Stevie Turner main roster, but maybe, ooh, maybe that's why Stevie Turner doesn't exist on NXT proper, because she's NXT Anonymous. Ooh. She's yeah. a hacker. She's a but hacker, she's, George. But she's not hurt. Like, she's she's. There. I know. She's just yeah. forgotten. Man, I love those early vignettes with her. I know, and she's uh, great. She had a great career pre-NXT. She was great in NXT UK. Um... Even on level up, she's really good. So I think her being NXT anonymous kind of will retcon a presence from Stevie Turner, even though she's been gone all this time. What's longer, the presence of NXT anonymous or the mystery raw GM? Ooh, it's tough. NXT anonymous has been going on for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we had Lola Vice versus Sol Ruka. And oh, that pesky Blair Davenport. Had to cost Sol Ruka the, the, the win. I predict Lola Vice versus Sol Ruka is going to be a major, major one-on-one match on the main roster within three years. Within three years? Within three years. Uh, we're seeing a lot more women featured sure. maybe on a one-on-one matchup. Uh, that's maybe not for a championship. I mean, uh, it's hopefully. rare, but it happens. Yeah, so so hopefully we see it more and more. I know one of the first ones, uh, I don't think we've ever seen it at WrestleMania, uh, but hopefully it'll happen soon. But yeah, I, I think sky's the limit for these two wrestlers. I love the fact that Lola dances, but in like a mocking way. Hmm. Like just kind of like, oh, like look at me. She's too cool for it, and that makes her cooler. Yeah, like there was yeah. that one where I think it was like two weeks ago uh, where she was like, it, it, the camera come, came back from a replay, and she's just there like staring down Natty and Carmen and just like moving her hips. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that that's kind of cold blooded, you know? Like imagine yeah, like yeah. even like MMA, like you knock out your per, you not you knock out your opponent, and you're just dancing, oh, you know, just just staring down at them. I think I thought that was cold blooded. Uh, I still think that uh, one or still want to have one of my life goals is to infiltrate like a radio station and play the Lola Vice theme song just to see what people think of it. That's one of your life goals. Yeah. Just Ooh, throw it in there. Do, no, no, wait, George. I'm going to do one better. This, this should be like a viral video series <laughs> where you just infiltrate, like you know, uh, uh, back backyard graduation party. Just put on the Lola Vice <laughs> theme. You go into the Pack Nightclub. Put on the Lola Vice theme. Yeah. Go to radio station. Lola Vice theme. Go to a Metallica concert. Lola Vice theme. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I know they have that wrestling nightclub or whatever it is, uh, the wrestling theme nightclub. But yeah, I want to infiltrate. Wait, 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 wait. wait. If there was a wrestling theme nightclub. Well, I, it was. I, I want to say that it was Aaliyah that was the DJ. Uh, maybe somewhere in Canada. Oh, but not like a regular. It's not like a no, no, no. Because that would be amazing if they had a ring and you could get up and dance in the ring or do like moves in the ring. I'm gonna do that. Forget podcasting. Forget my agency. <laughs> I'm opening a wrestling theme nightclub, and there's gonna be a I, ring in the middle of the club. I think we're on to something. It's good. That better. I think- well, I don't know. I still have my previous idea, which is uh, wrestling ring in the backyard, but hollowed out it's a swimming pool with just the ropes and the steps you could go off the ropes into the pool and actually have actual shows yeah oh in vegas oh. i've thought of, i've talked about this with my wife i'm like yo i can get wrestlers if i if i build it they will come i will put a wrestling ring in my backyard but it will be an above ground swimming pool and i will get local i will put on a wrestling show in my backyard wrestling ring swimming pool wrestling or what is it the swimmers wrestling federation I mean, we're going to work on, we're going to work on it. We can't call it the water. Re- Actually, the water wrestling federation would be kind of epic. <laughs> can't refer to it as the WWF though. That's uh, Un- under underwater wrestling underwater. Eh, well, that's a little um, different connotation too, but uh, figure it out. We'll figure it out. I think, we got, uh, we got but I like, I like the wrestling nightclub. I, I want to say on this, I want to say we got time, but before we know it, it's going to be somebody else that has it. And we just, you know, twirled our thumbs thinking about a name too much i know but you know you gotta got have the right name that's really the key yeah. so lola vice won due to blair davenport's interference and then natalia was on the titan tron and uh, in spring break in she challenged lola vice to an nxt underground match will shane O'Mac come back for this <laughs> uh no but i think baba tunde will oh okay well there you go or was his other name commander aziz we i like to pretend that never happened oh, no david daba kato that was his name yes he's not with the company anymore is he is he didn't he do a thing like a year ago where he attacked Apollo Crews? Uh, well, yeah, because they broke up. Yeah. Commander Z. 
Well, hopefully, I mean, hopefully they have it better than what they presented on Raw a couple years ago. I know they just kind of needed content back four years ago when there was nothing else going on uh, or nothing they could do. But, you know, I thought we were going to see like a like a fight pit, like the NXT fight pit. Yeah. But I guess they're going to go with Underground. So that's good because Baba Tunde is his real name and he was Dabakato and Commander Aziz. Look at yeah. that. You remembered all three. Look at that. Yeah. You're practically his biographer at this point. <laughs> they do call me the wrestling encyclopedia, but just because nobody knows what an encyclopedia is, I'm going to go mm -hmm. with wrestling Wikipedia. Okay. Okay. But so Lola versus Natty, that's going to be good. And uh, Carmen Petrovic is going to be there in Natty's corner. I like I like Natty's role here. I mean, pretty much I like how they pretty much infiltrate, and we'll talk about Karrion Cross as well and and Ivar. But I think they do this so well because no matter what you think, no matter what NX people think of NXT, whether it's a third brand, whether it's developmental, it has a big spotlight. Yes, like, this isn't on just a network exclusive. This isn't just on on Peacock or YouTube. This is on the USA Network. People can I don't know people channel surf again uh, still these days, but. People will literally say, oh, WWE NXT's on. Let's see what that's about. Oh, cool. Natty's here. Like, I remember just kind of rambling on and on. Uh, back when I was a little kid, I didn't know what I thought college wrestling was essentially what NXT was. So I was like, oh, my God, like college wrestling. I get to see the stars before they're stars. And I turn on ESPN. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, this is nothing that I thought it was going to be. Uh, hmm. You know, I thought I was going to see, you know, Kurt Angle or just maybe people like that. But lo and behold, it was nothing what I thought it was going to be. But I, I feel like NXT is exactly what I thought college wrestling was going to be. And hmm. you have the influx of some of these stop, uh, some of these stars, not just coming down, but coming down to make everyone else better. Like they're not there to to make people look worse. They're there to build some of these people up. So the fact that Lola Vice is going to get a rub from Natty, win or lose, mm -hmm. you know, and the fact that we saw um, Josh Briggs going up against Ivar and whatnot. Like I, I love the influx. I know we're going to see a lot more of that when NXT debuts on CW. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, collegiate wrestling, Greco-Roman wrestling, amateur wrestling, Olympic wrestling, what it really lacks uh, is character work. Yeah. <laughs> that would really elevate elevate the sport. Um, Ariana Grace and Gigi Dolan. Uh, we finally got to see some of this makeover as it was happening tonight. Uh, these are the segments I live for. Mm -hmm. And this was probably the high point of the last uh, 48 hours of my life. I'm a big Ariana Grace fan. Uh, I mentioned before, and I, I think she sky's the limit for her. I think she's got Chelsea Green vibes in a good way. I love that idea that Chelsea Green had about maybe creating a stable, adding on Ariana Grace and a few others. And I really hope that happens because that sounds like a really, really good, really, really good idea. And I know it sounds like a broken record, but Ariana Grace, her facial expressions, her her delivery, mm -hmm. just everything about her is just she's very such, good. To me, I'd say it's perfect. Yeah. I, I I think sky's the limit for for her. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what uh what happens. But I wonder how this gimmick is going to fare on the main roster. That's really my question. Maybe you know, I would say I, you don't have to bring in Santino. No, no, uh, no. In yeah, fact, I, you shouldn't. I mean, don't don't Charlotte Flair her. Yeah, like let uh, her be your own person. Yeah, it's important, especially because. Uh, but um. I think she could do sort of a hybrid uh, original Lacey Evans sort of gimmick mixed with her oh. current thing. And she's there to class up <laughs> the women's division. I yeah. don't know something. Also, I giggled to myself tonight because I said, man, if Lacey Evans was still with the company, we could get a KFEB explanation about how Lacey Evans and Javon Evans are related. <laughs> and that, made, that made me smile. That's the real reason Adam Cole is not in the WWE. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Ridge Holland is still in NXT. I mean, tonight he, he didn't retire. That was a swerve. They they done tricked you. They pulled a ruse. And tonight he wrestled with Keen Wild and Ridge got the win. I loved when he caught the dive to the outside of the ring. Oh yeah. Oh my God. That was, uh, Probably pretty painful for Joaquin. Uh, and then you had Sean Spears coming into the background, just kind of keeping an eye on everything. The chairman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see how that goes. Obviously, Ridge is, uh, he's very talented. Uh, he gets a bad rap for, you know, certain reasons, uh, unfortunate reasons. And I feel like, you know, people haven't been kind to him. And, and that's unfortunate because it is, it is, you know, it's not, I mean, this is wrestling mistakes happen. I look, I don't um, begrudge him the real life circumstances and accidents that happen. However, 
I have a massive chip on my shoulder as as much of the IWC about them trying to make that storyline when he first came to NXT and this idea of like, oh, he's cursed. Uh And then they quickly tried to 180 it and be able to say, no, he's cursed because he keeps getting injured. But originally he he was injuring others. At least it makes it feel like they're not trying to force it upon us, right? Because it really did seem like they were trying to make him like a like a baby face, right? Oh, yeah. he's from the main roster. He's a brawling brute. Pete Dunn gets a lot he's of cheers. A brawling Sheamus brute. Is, Sheamus, Sheamus is going to get a lot of cheers, you know. So we, why don't why wouldn't Ridge get a lot of cheers? So I mean, again, oh, Ridge, how about you, brawling brute? If this was the plan the whole time, kudos. But I, I, I my gut says. They want him. They thought he was going to be a big baby face, and they want him to be a big baby face, and it just wasn't working. So, you know, when that happens, you got to make him a heel. Has he always had that theme that sounds like Imagine Dragons? So it was the first time I really noticed that. I want to say, like when he first started with the NXT, it was a little more, uh, you know, UK ish. Okay. I guess you can say very more more galaxy. I guess you can say yeah. more galaxy. Uh, That's what everybody wants. Yeah. Because I can't see, I can't see like a a regular American or lucha libre guy ever coming out to Gallus' team. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Andre Chase and Thea Hale reconciled a little bit tonight, which was nice. I was a little confused <laughs> until this week. I was like, "Wait, what's going on?" So I kind of like that they finally cleared up uh, why uh, why Chase you almost went under. I guess you can say. Um, Yes. I just don't get why JC Jane was so quick to help them out only for her to be, uh, you know, kind of going her own way. But yeah, I mean, I, 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 it gives me new hope for Thea hell. I, I like her okay. gimmick. I don't, I mean, it's not like the best gimmick out there, but I like, she's, she's very committed to the role. And yeah, it's, uh, she's a good character, mm-hmm. you know, more than a gimmick. Yeah. It's a character. She's like 19 as well. So I think she's, Uh, God, it's born in 2003. Oh my God. Crazy. Huh. Um, so we heard from, uh, the family tonight, Tony D'Angelo Stax, Luca and Adriana. And, uh, Adriana's going to put her stamp on the women's division when she chooses. I, I like, I, I like her. I think she's, I like her uh, team. I, I, uh, my only complaint, and again, I know I'm in the, I know I'm in the minority. <laughs> these guys are too good in these yeah. roles. Like they're too good to the point where it's like, I I, I feel like it's still it's real to them in some ways. Oh, and, but again, that's not a bad up. thing, you know. I think they're getting called up. You think so? In the draft, I think so. I mean, there's been rumors that Netflix, CW, future partners are gonna have a little bit of a say in some of the call ups. I don't know how you look at their gimmick and don't think. This is gonna improve my TV show, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, the fact they can wrestle is just a bonus. Yeah, I mean, I, I Tony D'Angelo has been killing it since probably his first match in NXT. It's his first uh, promo in NXT. Oh, uh, I remember just how 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 many rave reviews he got after his first match. Uh, a lot of uh, this emoji. I remember yeah. <laughs> after his first match, but yeah, like I said, these guys are so good. Uh, I think Adriana Rizzo is is. A hidden gem i think mm-hmm. i think uh, i see big things for her but i i i i know tony d'angelo like i feel like he's got a lot to offer um whether it does nxt champion but again at the same time it does feel like they've done everything they can do in nxt like you don't need the nxt championship to validate your nxt career uh because yeah. as we've seen you can always go back and win it uh you know, I love Becky Lynch and Charlotte, but you know, I, I, I do think they're going to get drafted. Yeah. He said to the no quarter catch crew, uh, we took care of your problem. Let's not get into specifics, meaning uh Gulak and uh, this setup. Uh, there's going to be a six man tag next week. Should be fun. Yeah, it'll be good. Uh, Dragon off had an open challenge answered by the sweetheart of nxt javon evans breakout superstar just debuted from level up and uh is already getting a match with dragon off i have a tiny critique Uh-oh. <laughs> and please please tell me i'm wrong I, I i don't mind people disagreeing with me uh when i i know it's against the champion but this guy dragon is i don't want to face dragon 
No, you know, no. I like my chest. I like, you know, I, I like my skin. I don't want to see red bumps all over it. So it feels like a lot of the people that were rushing toward the ring to want to face uh, Ilya yeah. was like, dude, like none of you got none. Of, I, I love the confidence, but none of you guys have a chance of beating him. Like, you're, yeah. I don't know. I just feel like there should have been a little bit more fear, you know. And I feel like this guy, sh in my opinion, should be one of the top feared guys in the company, not just because he's the champion, but also because he will beat the living but Jesus out of you. I don't know. It just feels like it was just a big line just to get beat up. Mm. I don't know. I, I just didn't like there were so many people so quick to rush. And it, it wasn't like it was for the title, right? It was just yeah. a regular match. Yeah. It was good, though. Yeah. Javon's Lacey. very talented. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think he's, I think they said he's 19 years old, right? Yeah. Sky's the limit for that guy. I say that for a lot of people, actually. Hmm. So, real quick, I'm sure I'm sure the answer is yes. Has anybody ever, ever said you look like Matt Damon? I used to get that a lot, especially for well, my you, driver's license. Photo. Well, you're getting it right now. So, not just used to, you hmm. still get it. Matt Damon, uh, Eldon Henson. And uh, my favorite from when I first started the podcast, Glenn looks like a heavy set Finn Balor. <laughs> yep. That all makes sense. Like if you tell people like, oh, I'm Glenn Damon, they're like, oh, okay. Like they wouldn't bug you, but they'll be like, oh, okay. Like I believe it. In the year 2000, which is in the past now, it used to be in the future. <laughs> uh, in the year 2000, Eldon Henson's stunt double from the movie Idle Hands thought I was Eldon Henson at a Tenacious D show at the Troubadour. Came up, started <laughs> saying Eldon, Eldon. And uh, yeah, it was crazy. In, re in response to Baby Ice, I'm going to go with Departed, Matt Damon. Oh, wow. Because that was uh, a better movie than Rounders. Uh, Rounders was great. <laughs> Rounders was great. But Departed was just an illegal of its own. Based my life around the movie Rounders. Uh, well, he's my gambling habits. Uh, okay. So um, let's talk about uh, Sol Ruka's getting that no DQ match against Blair Davenport next week. But then Tatum Paxley took on Thea Hale. And Thea was doing great until that JC Jane interfered and helped tatum steal a win good match though yeah this was a fun match uh obviously more storyline based um you know people interfere jc jane looks like it's not over i like that it does look like like we mentioned that mania or leading up to mania that it looks like it's gonna uh continue after yeah. after what we saw uh, with these people so i dig it i like that it's going to continue maybe into a gimmick match who knows maybe we'll got, finally see that one-on-one -on -one match that we all yeah wanted to see so need it yeah has to happen but this is good uh feel great tonight this is the thing i think that if there's been an argument for delaying the one-on-one -on -one match it's so thea could get more reps in on house shows mm -hmm. and have the experience but i think thea is coming along very nicely her wrestling skills yeah i agree yeah, so I think that's going to be a great match when it happens. Uh, Roxanne Perez was backstage uh, saying how easy Ava's job was. Ava said, fine, you're going to get uh, defend your NXT Women's Championship against both Tatum and Lyra at spring break, and that was fun. Do you buy Roxanne as a heel? Eh, it's kind of the same thing Cora Jade was doing, but it works. Yeah, it, it, it's still... She's not bad at it. I'm, I, I don't want to say it's bad. Right, I'm a glass half full kind of person. It just needs a little more convincing, but it, it doesn't mean it's not in the right direction. Same thing with Cora Jade. Sometimes her promos were a little like uh, still too too bubbly. Uh, I thought she was great in the two three months that she was back for for a little bit before she got hurt. Uh, so we'll see. I, I I think the plan was uh, rumors have it the the innuendo was uh, these two were going to be teammates or at least. You know, oh, yeah. back to being friends on the heel side. I know a lot of people thought that uh, Roxanne Perez is in the role that Cora Jade would have been in if she didn't get hurt. Team you know, like who knows? Yes. But then again, like I said, there's also the rumor there would have been uh, teaming again. So I think that would have been fun. Whenever you have two baby faces, then they split and now they come back as heels. That's always interesting. It's always fun. Life is a mystery. Um, so authors of pain with the to final testament sorry that's just how it looks with the extending of that uh cross uh took on Isha Sanofi and Malik Blade I loved the um uh, promo they did before this with uh what's her name with uh Scarlet 
No, uh, the Malik and Idris did with uh, oh, uh, Briley, 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 Briley. That was great. She, her like pseudo fitness influencer shtick, like with the positivity and whatnot, I think is very underrated. It's very body Donis like, yeah, but it's good uh, in this modern age. Yeah, we're in the age of the influencer. <laughs> um, I it still needs a little bit for me to be honest with you uh too bubbly or too bubbly to the point where it reminds me too much of thea hill i feel like there's a lot of similarities he is not going to talk to you and say so everyone's been asking me about my skincare routine and i have a special (laughs) promo code for you to get you a discount on your first order that's not thea hill yeah thea is about energy because you don't think riley is about energy no but thea is about like She's supposed to be a collegiate student that was like, I'm going to drink a case of Red Bull and study all night and ace this test. That's the yeah. energy. Whereas Briley is like, um, like, hey, everybody, let's talk about the power of movement. And also, if you order these crystals off my website, I will give you a discount if you use my code. Like, it's it's a little different. It's a little but different. If you saw, like, if you were at work, right? And there was, we always, there's always that one person at work that's like, oh, like, you don't dislike her, but you're like, great. Here come, here comes the positivity train. Like, can you, can you like have <laughs> a bad day? Just, train. Wait, just ha- George sitting there, like, uh oh, here comes the positivity train. <laughs> can you just okay, have a Eeyore, bad day? Right? Can you just have a bad day once in your life? I don't know. I, I, I'm good for her. Good for her. That's all I got to say about that. Sure. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> Idris and Malik got killed by the authors of pain. I mean, not no. like Drew Gulak, Tony D'Angelo <laughs> killed, but no, I mean, no surprise. Uh, I, 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 and I've said this before, uh, Malik and Idris need something specific. And that specific thing is a freaking name. Hmm. Just give me a name. That's it. Okay. That's all I want. Um, so we uh Fraxium came out after to get in the face of uh AOP. Oh, I loved Briley also calling them Ope <laughs> for authors of pain. AOP. Yeah, AOP. Ope. Ope. That was great. <laughs> She's underrated, I'm telling you. Um Josh Briggs took on Ivar in a match that I mean at this point I was just waiting for the main event. Ivar won over Briggs. Where's Jensen? When he needs him, where is Valhalla? Yes, yeah. Where is Jensen? I, I've, I'm still wondering. Like, when is he going to come out to the Journey song? That's what I want. When is he going to come out to "Someday Love"? I forgot the name of the song. Separate ways. Separate ways. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think they want to pay the license fee for that. Yeah, I mean, if they do, though, if they to- do, to- Tony Khan would have done it. Yes, uh, he would have. <laughs> and then gone on Twitter to tell everyone he paid a year two two wrestler salary for that song. Yes, um, Ivar got the win. He should. Should he? I mean, Briggs got that triple threat North American title match. I feel like Briggs is due something. And Ivar was a runner up in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. <laughs> okay, that and a dollar won't even get you on the bus anymore. <laughs> Um, let's fun. talk about talk the main event Carmelo Hayes versus Trick Williams and they couldn't lower the steel cage so we got to see them putting the steel cage together and then it was so long they showed that promo which was a long promo and recap before this uh, before the steel cage match but it had me hyped for it but come on we knew Trick was winning tonight yeah uh, I, th- I thought the match was okay it's better than their one at, at Santa Deliver this match was strictly meant to put Trick over uh, I don't think this was meant to be one of the classic steel cage matches of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this match served its purpose, and that is to help elevate Trick into the next level. I'm getting ready for the main event uh, of or going up against Ilya Dragunov yeah. at Spring Breakin, and I, I, I mean, a person I think Trick Williams is going to win. Uh, yeah. So they need to. They can't just have him lose randomly to a guy that's probably yeah. going to get drafted in about a week and a half. Yeah, Carmelo's going up. There's really nothing else for him to do. I agree. This was, I think, his swan song. And uh, he tried, but Trick uh, got the better of him. My only beef with the match was 
I wish he would have sold the knee more at the finish. Like he just ran into a knee and just like, oh, okay, nothing. I'm good. Like sell it a little bit. At least sell it to the point where it would make sense for Ilya to work on it during their match, during their upcoming match. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good main event though. When it goes on last time we have the overage though, you kind of know it's going to be a little abbreviated. It feels like you're just counting down until it ends. Yeah. You know? I, I do, I do want to say I'm a little upset. Uh, I know, I know they don't really feature everyone every week and I love being on this podcast because I am going to make, um, maybe not a prediction, but just someone who I, I am totally all in on and that's Jada Parker. Oh, I've, yeah, I've been wanting like to her. just praise her ever since her one of her first promos in nxt she said a line and ever since she said this line i was just hooked one thousand percent and she said she said don't come for me and i won't send for you and obviously i didn't say it as good as she did but she said that and i'm like yes please like one thousand percent like i she's one of those people where every time she's on screen i think she has such an aura factor about her that I, i i truly believe she's going to go a very very long way in this business no she definitely has that if factor and i think she's great and uh this was a fun show i mean it went by quick which is i mean nxt is variety right like there's just so much going on you can't be bored for long during nxt and everything's everything has a purpose too like mm-hmm. nothing nothing drags uh yeah. even for some of these matches where they bring in some of the main roster talent again it all serves a purpose it, it's yeah. they're, they're not just kind of coming in and saying, all right, I'm going to make an appearance now. It's Ivar maybe wanting to, wanting to crack at the w, uh, at the NXT North American Championship. It's Natalia having beef with Lola Vice. And, and it's maybe AOP maybe going after the NXT Tag Team titles. Uh, although the, them versus Breaker and Baron would have been would have been gi- gi- ginormous. But yeah. you know now we're going to see them maybe going up against uh, Axiom and Frazier, which is going to be another kind of clash of styles between the two. So you know, everything serves a purpose when it makes it just such easier to follow. Yeah, no, I agree. Cool. Well, that was NXT tonight. George, any final thoughts? My final thoughts is I need to hop aboard the positivity train. Just in general. That's my choo-choo. It's really I good. Guess, I, I guess, I song. guess that doesn't really mean anything without the choo-choo sound. It's just me putting my arm up and down but let's see who else wants to hop on the positivity positivity train i hear there's power in it <laughs> we'll see cool well thank you everyone for tuning in tonight um tomorrow night tune in for dynamite coverage we'll see how are they going to follow up that video last week Ooh. uh i'm going to be on tomorrow night and i gotta say i can't wait i wasn't on last week thank god because i would have tore them a new one on what i thought was the absolute worst episode of dynamite that ever existed wow wow there you have it folks okay so that, means it, that means it can only get better tune in tomorrow i'm at glenn rubenstein thanks everyone for joining us see you back next time on wrestling inc take care <laughs>